Moment to moment we drift through You forget some parts of me I forget some parts of you But our memories persist Until we are gone Time's washed, we cannot resist Fate tell us in the dawn
Just another one. 
0091, Rocket 6, I'm near it up. Code reads 5695, Rocket 2, I'm okay, I'm alive. Code reads 0112, Rocket 5, but what do I do? Code reads 6208, Rocket 3, I am too late.
I can't recall the details They fluttered through my mind I remember the tatters Better left behind It's like a fire through my senses A punishment for me I can't hardly stand it Like smoky silent dreams There he stood there smiling A grinning happy face I think he had me figured I think he had me With his arms folded across his chest Confident my voice You'd think he'd show me mercy And offer me a choice The scent of my fear Crawling up my spine I knew I was long for it I'm quickly losing time The dealer always winning He's sipping his wine Quickly growing weary My hands begin to sweat My vision gone down faded The blood cold and wet I am losing my feeling I'm breaking apart My tumble twisted soul Went out in my heart Now he's opening the door And inviting me me to take the next seat as he points with his chin he says you'll see me shortly please just sign your name i take the pen cause i know i'm the only one to play It ain't the way that you tell me It ain't the way that you go It ain't the empty room silence It ain't the way that you show time get it on now we gotta go away we had our time to be near now it ain't the time to stay it's the end of the line red glow fire burn it down 
It's the end of the line Not this time Not this round Just ain't a time No time It's just the end The end of the line Time to get crazy. It ain't the time that we grew. Don't you stay, you gotta go. It's all over, ashes falling. Don't you stay, you gotta go. It's all over, fire's calling. this round just ain't a time no time it's just the end the end of the line Ice is all. 
all the pieces I remain here I'm broken I'm broken And hello, everybody. Welcome to session zero of Wings of Fire, a Savage World Adventure Edition Space Western RPG. It's a mouthful to say. I am here with five of my friends. Uh, we got Darkstar, Rakius, Wolfstar, Pigamolo, and The Boy. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> we have we have finally arrived. <laughs> Hope everybody is ready and and ready to go here. So uh, basically, we're going to start just by kind of doing some intro into the game, um, and then 
this will be just kind of a unique situation. In the future, we'll probably just start the game <laughs> rather than doing all the stream and stuff. The one thing I don't want to do is kind of like stream the game, you know, like be a streamer in game. I just want to do the game. <laughs> Does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> it does not compute no. all right well so this is i said as a is a space western uh game um it's set in a kind of dawn of human stellar expansion uh the technology is on the verge of becoming super but not quite there yet um and you know there's just a lot of problems in the what they call the 16 systems even though there are about 20 stars <laughs> um so what we got is um one of the characters uh jackson will be inheriting a spaceship we're gonna do that scene soon It'll be accompanied by Rusty K. Jones, Roger Kuzland. Is that how you pronounce it? Kuzland? Kuzland? Okay. Uh, Sam Burroughs and Will Wellington, who apparently is a Marvel character, we decided. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, do we want to go over anything specific? Yeah, I sent any questions. I know you didn't. <laughs> Little, what's that? We're good. Um, all right. Well, the, the only other thing I could think of is this is the Savage Worlds RPG system. Um, it's, it's relatively simple, open system made for uh, putting whatever world or you know time period into it so took a bit of work to get here but uh i think i got it <laughs> all right um so i i guess we will begin so let me open up um we're not going too far tonight it's just kind of an introduction to the story and how everybody gets together um, all right, so we begin. Everybody roll for initiative. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Battle Royale. <laughs> um, so Jackson, you are attending the funeral of your grandfather, Reggie Boss Clement. Um, he was kind of, uh, kind of a, uh, a distant uh, grandfather, as he didn't really associate with his own family very much. Um, he just kind of went his own way. He was, uh, he was known as some sort of adventure in the stars, a retired soldier. Um, sometime around the Doctrine War, which was a religious conflict that occurred when the Catholic Church essentially split into two and formed a, a space pope, <laughs> more or less. Um, so he fought in that war uh, in his younger years. Um, he was a, a pilot uh, of some fairly good... Uh, ability uh, and it, his job was essentially hauling troops and equipment where they were needed in the war he was decorated for bravery under fire and getting the job done um, in fact his his medals are arranged behind his casket as you enter the room all your family is arranged there um, it's it's you know it's typical funeral fare. Everybody's kind of just being quiet and um, 
just kind of having quiet words. Oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, yeah, it's, we should catch up, you know, the, the usual family stuff. Um, so why don't you describe what you've been doing all this time leading up to this point? And you are, uh, you have been out there as a, as a, as a... And how do you think the, the family views you? <laughs> You're kind of a, a rogue character in their eyes. Yeah, that's that's kind of the general atmosphere you're getting here. You know, like everybody just gives you that polite wave. You see your mother and father, they don't even really kind of like you're like, yeah, yeah you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's kind of the general atmosphere for you. you it's very uncomfortable. Um, the only person you really recognize that you've had some some ties to over the years is your uncle Orly, uh, your grandfather's younger brother. Um, kind of a one of those, you know, always fun guys. Not a fungus, but. A, a fun guy. <laughs> um, he's kind of <laughs> exactly. Uh, he, he's he's kind of a businessman, but <clears throat> he doesn't. He's not like suit and tie. Just kind of laid back about making money, but you know that he's pretty serious when he needs to be. Um, rumor has it though that he deals with a lot of. Uh, lower end clientele um as it were so his his view on the family and their view of him is not <laughs> that great either <laughs> he kind of he actually you know waves and acknowledges you He's like, yeah, it's good to see you, old boy um yeah he's, he's just a very whimsical figure in the family uh, I mean, he mostly gets along with people. He, he's here. He's talking to people. Just, you know, just that little edge to him. Uh, he was also 20 years younger than your grandfather, so he's he's not up there in the years. Although your grandfather would be about 90. That makes Orly about 70. Uh so his main business is dealing in real estate and cargo hauling. Um, and you've only really, you know, you've met him at family functions before. So he says, how, how are you getting along, boy? It kind of waves that off. And, eh. You're not like them. They're they're all set in like just those those family ways. Eh. I mean, you gotta love them, but at the same time, you know they they gotta realize that you're you. So what have you been up to? That's so. I, I heard you've been uh, shipping out. Uh, yeah, the, the people I talk to have, have seen you around, and it kind of took me by surprise to hear your name come up. Yeah, but but it was all good. So, you know, <laughs> so, can't complain about that. 
Uh, but you know, you, you gotta watch yourself out there, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, uh, I, I, since I, I heard all this stuff, uh, you know, I, I really would like to see you after, after this. Uh, I think you should swing by me and my lawyer's office, uh, you know, in a couple days after this whole shindig is over. Yeah. And then we really expect you to stay. You know, you didn't know your grandfather. Nobody knew him all that well. So, uh, you know, here we are. Good, good. He uh, gives you the address to go to. And by the way, you are on Earth. Um, you're you're out in the old Californian country, um, right along the coast. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'll be happy to see you then. I, I think I got some opportunity for you. Might, might be right up your space ace. So, uh, I'm gonna, I gotta get out of here myself. He's, he is also wheelchair bound, so, um, he uh kind of hovers his way out. Uh, of the the room, kind of leaving you there with everybody you don't like. <laughs> maybe maybe that's that that's telling. Who knows? Um. So yeah. Um. So a few days go by after the. The funeral, you know, you don't really make any reconnections with anybody. Uh, it just didn't seem that anybody actually wanted to bother. Which is kind of sad. You could be sad. <laughs> um, but you take a visit to the city, get up into the the big building. Big generic lawyer building, and there's old Uncle Orly and and another man dressed up in a nice lawyerly outfit. Um, ah, it's it's good that you showed up. This is this is uh, pretty unprecedented, you know. Uh, you, now, now, I understand what we're gonna talk it comes with. Few responsibilities on your side, but uh, I think we can work it out. But uh, I'll, I'll let my trusted lawyer come up here. Um, and eventually the lawyer picks up his data pad, says, um, Well, uh, I have here the, the will of Reggie Clement, uh, and it states that to my brother, I leave my trusty Samar transport, name or what you will. She went by the name Phoenix while I was her captain, but now uh, you could do what you will. I make use of her how you would. I trust you, Orly. I trust your judgment and style. You'll do what's right, and uh, I've deemed uh, one of the most important facets of my long life to you. So do take care of her. She'll take care of you, uh, as she did me and my crew. And then the lawyer looks up at you. However, Mr. Clement here has decided to pass the transport craft in question to you, Mr. Tempest. Uh, says you'll probably have use for it. So if you're willing and uh, make the proper arrangements, uh, do you wish to proceed? Yeah, I, I, I figured you, you would like that. Uh, you know, I don't have use for this transport. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, an old, SAMR, SMRT, you know, it's a short range multitask uh, type of uh, transport. It's about a hundred years old.
We're gonna go see it. <laughs> your, your, your grandfather took good care of it, but uh, it's old. I mean, you know, it was commissioned a hundred years ago. And he flew through the war. I don't even know how he got it. To tell you the truth, friggin' military crap. Uh, but you know, I, I, I'm not gonna do anything with it. I'll probably scrap it if I if I keep it. But since you uh, had the same bug your grandfather did, I figure. Uh, you might do better off with it. See what you can do with it. Now, as I did say, there are some responsibilities that come with this. And uh, let's just say I have business dealings that need to be done. And, you know, I'd like to be an upstanding man. And, uh, but sometimes you need somebody you could trust out there. Family. And I, I figure if uh, I need you to, you know, run some things for me, some errands, that you would be able to pick up on that if you catch my drift. And we're I am more than willing to talk more about this, you know, uh, with you. But uh, what, do you, what do you say uh, tomorrow we take a, a ride out there? It's uh, stored in the desert. An old ship, uh, yeah, more or less a graveyard. <laughs> All right, well, pick me up then. <laughs> And with that, uh, you sign all the documents and dot your I's, cross your T's, misspell a few things. And uh, you are now the owner of the Samar Military Transport. Uh, the lawyer asks you, uh, do you have any particular name in mind? Uh, that is what the designation was. That'll make things easy. I will uh, I will get one of the Interior agents down there. And just so you know, Interior is who runs kind of the interstellar and a lot of the interplanetary travel, which also includes ship registration and de designators. Uh, I will send an interior agent up there uh, at some point, and we'll re-register the ship as active and get you going, provided hopefully it could fly. So Orly says, all right, I'm out of here. I'm going to go drink about 12 beers and take a nap. And once again, Orly leaves you. <laughs> um, so the next day, uh, I take it you 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 pick up Orly. Ah, good. All right, you want a beer? Oh, you're driving. Never mind. I'll drink yours. <laughs> uh, what kind of car do you have? All right, so just a kind of a four door sedan or a deal. Still got those 400 years from now. Except, the, except they're running, you know, on electrical or, or you know, fission engines. <laughs> <laughs> Strings and hamsters. Um, so, yeah, uh, you pick them up, drive out, 
It's a long drive out to the desert. Um, and eventually you get there. And you stop at the parking lot and you just see miles of ships in various conditions. Some look newer. Some look like they are in the process of falling apart. I just, uh, can you talk for a second? Yeah, I see what's wrong. Somebody said they couldn't hear people. Fix that. I try talking again. Uh, uh hello. <laughs> Love you all. Thank you for bringing that up, Blade. Um, so yeah, just rows of ships. Uh, going out there. Um, yeah, uh, I guess we're going to go find it. I'm not exactly sure where it's parked. He kind of pulls out a data pad. Okay, a lot. 575. Uh, yeah. And uh, you guys start walking. And he, well, he's hovering. <laughs> And there, eventually, oh, you come oh, by. I, as we walk, I ask, well, who owns all this? Uh, I, I actually have no idea. Um, he names off some companies that basically lease the space out here. Uh. Um, but I, I guess these are just, you know, either ships that have been given to those companies or, you know, people are just parking things they don't use here. You walk by like a, the biggest hunk of junk. It's like panels are falling off of it as you're walking by. <laughs> that's not it, right? Uh, I hope not. Uh, nope. That's that's lot five seventy. So I think we're five uh, five away. Yeah, there we go. And keep walking. <clears throat> five seventy five. You see. The most sparkling ship you've ever seen in your life. Ice painted midnight blue, sleek, shining. Or we go. And he's like, that's not. It. <laughs> that's slot 570. Ah, wipe some dust. <laughs> Sorry, kid. <laughs> that's all yours. <laughs> ah, yeah, 576. <laughs> and the. Uh, he uh, points out the ship right next to it, uh, which would be this one. This is kind of the the art that started this whole campaign. <laughs> so that is the the military transport. Um, it does not look great. Yeah, that's um, that's quite an interesting piece of equipment there, Cool. And some of the some of the panels are missing. Um, there's no armament on it. Um, you could see from your angle behind it, uh, there is one shuttle out of two on it. The other shuttle bay looks a little raggedy, like nothing's parking there. Um, one of the engines doesn't look aligned. <laughs> so, uh, is it? <laughs> uh, Some work. Kind of, he, he says with gritted teeth. <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh, looks like a little bit of a fixer upper, but uh, here, why don't you open up the bay? And he hands you a uh, little data pad device. I walk around it real, you know, not real quickly, but quickly, and then uh, tap open on the pad. And the rear cargo bay door shutters open. Kind of does that, <laughs> do, 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 and then does a smooth thing, and then do, 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 and settles to the ground. <laughs> 
That worked. <laughs> Still got power. Hey, we might be having another funeral soon, uh, soon Uncle. And, uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the cargo bay. So the cargo bay is, is quite large. Now, the, the entire ship itself is about 270 feet long. Um, the cargo bay is probably about uh, a third of that length, so uh, probably just a little under 100 feet. Um, we'll go into it shortly. <laughs> I'll show you. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some some stuff covered in sheets in there and whatnot. Old crates and stacked here and there, but who knows what purpose they serve now. Well, let's go aboard, Captain. Mm, go in. He whips out another beer as he <laughs> hovers his way up the, the ramp. The remarkable thing about these uh, Samar SMRT transports, this uh, this whole cargo bay detaches. You can actually fly it down through an atmosphere and land it. That's how they would oh, no transport kidding. things down to the surface. So you could keep the thing in the air as a gunship while transporting goods down below and covering them. It points off to the left as you're entering, and you can see there's a door open, and there's like a little control room, and it's got you know the the uh, little window visor thing where a pilot could sit and pilot this thing downwards. Uh, so that's a that's, that was always a neat feature of these. They don't really do that anymore. I don't know why. It's a good design, uh, and then it. Uh, the atmospheric and engine control is the other door, and he points off to the right. There's another door there. And then uh, this button over here opens up the main cargo door, which should bring you up into the ship itself. Um, how, when was the last thing this time? How old is this thing again? When was the last time it flew? I don't know the last time it flew. The model is a hundred years old. He was he was flying it long after that. Yeah, you know, after the war and whatnot. This crew uh, would often do some runs for me here and there. No, that that's good. Let's go see what you got. So, uh, well, I'll continue. They open the, the interior cargo doors. Yep. Uh, the large door opens pretty easily. It seems to be in working condition. Uh, there's a stairwell that goes up on either side onto a balcony. That would overlook the bay as the door is open. Um, and there's a man standing up on the balcony. Rakius, introduce your character. What does he look like? Uh, uh, roughly six foot um, mound of muscle, but in the torso region rather than arms and legs kind of thing. Currently wearing kitchen apron at the moment. And he just lit up a cigar and he's watching them rise up into the platform. So the picture there is pretty much what, pretty much what you see. Graying goad high, goatee high and tight around the, around the hair and just a permanent on his face. <laughs> um, 
Orly's like looking at up at you like what? <laughs> so uh <clears throat> you're the new boss, I guess. Uh, not me. It points to oh. Jackson. Oh. Oh the kid, okay. So you Yeah, know, that would be that would be me. So you know, Arrakis, that you were hired just to take care of the ship. Just keep it together. It isn't not to really fly around it. Um but just kinda keep things clean, keep it going, make sure things mostly work. Yeah, so I'm the janitor of here. This, 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 I broadly gesture this thing. So I keep it running, keep things oiled, cleaned up, kind of, except the outside, but I'll get to that. Um, <clears throat> or, at least pull. or at least faces all scrunched up. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been yeah. living here? That's what I was tired for. Been living in here a long time. Uh, uh, did my brother Reggie Clement hire you? And the answer to that is yes. I nod. <laughs> That's weird. Why is it weird? Oh, that you'd be living on the ship in the middle of the desert. It's quiet. Anyway, you gentlemen hungry? Orly looks at you, Jackson. Yeah, I guess. What do you got? Eggs in two hours. I'll be back. And I walk off. Two hours? Just make an egg? Okay. I, 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 I it was weird. But... I head to the galley and proceed to start cooking. <laughs> uh, With the cigar. <laughs> Orly kind of looks up to you. Well, I guess we'll go in. Yeah, I guess we could. I don't know if we could fire him. You mean he comes with the ship? Uh, it sounds that way. No, okay. The so guys head up and uh, just adjust the scene here. Uh, what you got? So, the galley. It's going to ask me this question every single time. Please stop asking me this question. All right, so you're in the kitchen, and you guys arrive in the galley. Or this is sort of a, a living space. Um, there's a table here. Uh, there's a TV on the, the west wall, quote unquote west. Uh, the other side has a bunch of blockers and storage space. Uh, uh, I think there's uh, furniture that goes into the floor. Uh, you can set this up, you know, be a lounge, dining room. Okay, supposed to be quite nice. Uh, <laughs> You hear fucking rattling of pots from the kitchen. <laughs> Off to your left. Guttural swearing. Who are two, uh, our... What's that? Is that our two-hour eggs? Two-hour eggs. Jesus Christ, who makes two-hour eggs? I said so. Orly comes up with the wood egg. Stop what I'm doing slowly and look and walk over. Yeah. What's your name? Rusty. Rusty, Rusty. K. Jones. Rusty. Hey, <clears throat> hey, 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 Rusty. Mm -hmm. 
man in the wheelchair says to you. Why does it take two hours to make eggs? That's how it's got to be done. All right. Well, he says that's how it's got to be done. Got any beer hey. there? I look around. Uh, hang on. Cla <laughs> Close the window. Clattering of glasses. Pulls out the last two beers in the place because he hasn't restocked yet. Open up the glass. Here you go. <clears throat> oh, thanks. Okay. Gotta go back to cooking. Gotta go back right. to cooking. I think the bridge is uh, up here. It kind of hovers off <laughs> down the corridor. To be able to move your token. Fine. Window. Okay. Hold on. Yes. There we go. Uh, where do these places have bedroom bunks? Bedroom bunks. It's like just poking at it. <laughs> just like, yeah, what's this over here? I'm going to stop. Uh... So, yeah, so this does. <laughs> Ah, there uh. Yeah. Is it? It's here. All yours. You're supposed to say what, the currents? <laughs> what? I sit down. I see. This is, uh, this is kind of comfortable. I just sit down here in the, the captain's chair. <laughs> That's the, the, the pilot station, anyway. Yeah. Be comfortable? Yeah, for being 100 years old. In pretty good condition. I guess that, uh, that guy, Rusty, uh, Kept the ship up, which is good. Uh, let's see. The sound of a large saucepan falls to the floor, followed by more swearing. Oh well, my god, what's going on down there? I got it. I clean it up. I clean. Two Don't hour. worry about it. <laughs> three hour eggs now? You're a funny guy. <laughs> uh, oh, god. you got... Uh... Captains and, and first mates cabins over here. That was good. He hovers back down. So, so Jackson, uh, probably going to need to hire a crew for this thing. You can, uh, uh, probably. Hey, is there anything else you could do besides janitor or cook? Well, a cook for one points at the stove. Can you cook more than eggs that take two hours? It's in the budget. In the budget. All right. Mm -hmm. I see. He <laughs> covers off. Be careful track of everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Anyway, yeah. I think we should uh, put the word out, you know, get some people in here to apply, get this ship in, into to space, get it going. Okay. Uh, I'll put my feelers out and uh, put some messages up uh, for some potential hires. We'll see what we get. Hey, Rusty. Yeah. You're fired. Can I fire you? No, you can't, actually. Yeah. Oh, well. Who can't? Because if my grandfather, who owned this ship, hired you, he's passed on. And the ship went to my Uncle Orly, who now passed it on to me. So, could I fire you? Nope. It's actually in your contract. 
<laughs> Hold on. Ship comes with surly Rusty K. John. No, oh, so it does. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you, you get a feel for this ship. Uh, and we'll uh, put the word out. Get some people in here. See if we can dig up. Oh. All right. You know. Uh, I'm thinking this is going to be a fixer-upper job. And I probably need a few favors to roll out. Uh, so why don't I give you an advance? Uh, what do you say, like 3,200, 500 credits? Okay. That'd be uh, uh, fantastic. We'll call it a ship's budget. And uh, that, that should get you going. Hey, Rusty! Eh? You can't have any of that. Any you what? Wh you want to know why? Why? What are we talking, talking about? Budget. I can't hear you. I'm talking about my budget. <laughs> I just... <laughs> you being a wise guy? Being smart? Yeah. What are you talking about here? I can bear it because I'm in the kitchen. There's, there's noises happening, so I could I half heard what was said. So. I, I I peeked my head. Uncle Orly said he's given me a budget, and it's not in your budget. Take any of it. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, you get paid nonetheless. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, essentially what Orly will do is put this, put the word out that uh, people should come and apply and see who comes. So we'll, uh, advance to that day unless you guys want to do anything else. No. Well, just, just so you know, you can move around to different levels of the ship by going like to these stairs and it'll automatically teleport you kind of a new feature ish to a foundry and oh, thankfully that's cool. wolf star <laughs> told me about it. otherwise i never looked it up and used it. <laughs> that, that's really cool you're welcome you're very thank you um so yeah you so you basically you have a medic bay over here a um you have the kitchen kitchen storage you have the like a troop bunk uh a troop bunker over here could probably hold about 20 people you have two um kind of class a suites for guests that you're transporting. Uh, you have crew bunks uh, for various ranks, if you want, or you can convert them into other rooms. You also have the captain's and first mate's room. The bridge is up here. Uh, there is a below deck, in which there is a power generator room. Uh, the uh, the, the bubble drive uh, system as well. Um, you have the atmospherics and life support along with the gravity assist uh, room over here. Small workshop here, small workshop here. Two empty rooms that could be used for whatever. And the main computer room. Uh, uh, Orly tells you that you might want to check the computer at some point to make sure it's okay. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, it's an old ship. You may want to talk to uh, Rusty about it at some point. So, what we'll do is kind of advance a couple of days. I'm going to move you back over here
Stop moving your stuff around. Actually, just go to the go to the cargo bay. <laughs> That's where I was going. Skip over to that day. Hello, everybody in chat. Hey, uh, it's from uh, the Light No Fire Discord has shown up. What's yeah. going on, Hizzy? All right. So, a couple days roll by. You you set up a little table out here. You got your data pads. Rusty standing in the back with his arms folded. <laughs> He's already did hungry. We, did we ever get those eggs? <laughs> did, did you ever finish the you eggs did. them? <laughs> yes, I did. Did they get sick? No. Two hour eggs. <laughs> uh, a couple days go by and. You get a bunch of applicants and between you and Orly, um, you narrow it down to four people that look good uh, to, to Orly anyway. Um, an ex-military guy, a heavy lifter for cargo, um, a green liner of uh, some skill be good for uh, security and whatnot and a rather large man who uh, appears to be really good at science academics uh, stuff like that um, the uh, names on the on the data pad come up as Sam Burroughs Will Wellington Roger Kusland and Aaron Sargent. All right. Uh, do you want to interview these guys? Make sure these are, are uh, nah. top notch. So the rest of you. Yeah, of course, you have signed on to this job or applied for this job for whatever reasons. Uh, whether to be just on a ship or to actually be a part of a crew. Uh, but here you are. So whatever, you know, uh, happens, you get to answer in your own way. But this is the only part I'm kind of kind of railroad in. Because um, it just help us get to the point, essentially. All right, boy. Well, why don't you... Uh, Ask your questions. Why don't we start with uh, 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 Sam Burroughs. Yes, Sam. sir. Why don't you come up call here? You, call you Sam. Uh. Sorry, what was that, sir? I said, may I call you Sam? Yes. He's standing in attention. Well, at 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 at, at, ease. at ease. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what's your background, Mister Burrow? Uh, I'm an electronics and logistics specialist, sir. Do you have a particular focus, like in, say, computers or weapons? Mostly, or... mostly computers. Some firearms training. What makes you go into outer space? I'm a former Merc. Sticking in one place doesn't work too well for me. Gets real boring real quick. Understand the feeling. Um, anything I should know about you? Anything special? Probably. Um, be interesting to find out what that is. 
Uh, I do do occasional jobs as a private investigator. It's mostly freelance work. Um, okay. And I'm a pretty good hand at research. Do you hear from and, um, you? Would you say you're pretty good at research? That the yeah. guy named Aaron kind of goes, mm-hmm. I ignore it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. What uh? What kind of payment are you looking to get out of? Room and board, uh, obviously, and uh, this would uh, count as share. kind of your standard pay, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, uh, if you have no um. No other concerns. Uh, welcome aboard. Like all right. Thank fellow. you, sir. I like this fellow. He's clean cut. Got it all together. If you could go stand over there uh, next to that rusty. Uh, we'll be back to you in a few minutes. Morley picks up his data pad. Uh, Will Wellington. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I thought in um just grab your token and crack it. Yeah. Sometimes it, sometimes we gotta it, get it, used to No, it was funny because when you go to told me my token before, I'm like I forgot how to do it. I'm like, uh <laughs> I'm gonna just move. And so, <clears throat> before you is a a large, very large man. I mean, he's not overly tall, probably in the, the high six-foot area. He is made of muscle everywhere and has horns sticking out of his head and kind of... Uh, bovine ears. This man is either modified or he is a mutant. Or both. Modified mutant. Uh, so, Mr. Wellington, what are your areas of specialties? Um, I'm out. part mutant. I'm what? Take things <laughs> out. Put them back down. <laughs> Don't be shy, son. I'm not going to bite. <laughs> I'm part mutant, part cyborg, or uh, I have a couple implants. Um, what are you good at? You got to beating things up. Yes, I would be your muscle if you're hired. If I get... Oh, that was easy. <laughs> Got to order more eggs, though. That's a big boy. <laughs> good if you would be so kind to stand by Mr. Mister Burroughs and Rusty. Yeah. Uh, uh, Roger. Hustle. Kuzlum. Cowland. Kuzland. Kuzland. Uh, Roger Kuzland. Like Cowland. <laughs> Step on up here. We'll take a look at you. So he's wearing a helmet, takes it off, puts it on the handle, this large hammer with a spike on it sitting next to him before he walks up. With a kind of a quick pace, long coat as it flows, because he's walking a little bit faster than you would expect. He's got a gun on his hip and kind of a Stun gun strapped to his thigh, like a lot of cops do nowadays. And he comes up, 
kind of an intense look, like like you see on his uh, on the picture there, with a green sheen to his face. And it just, yep. All right, son. Um, what's your uh, what's your speciality? A little bit of a jack of all trades kind of guy, hunting down people, fixing stuff as I need it. Been traveling alone for a while. Had to get used to doing a lot of things my own. Bit of a Okay, very good. Um, what are you looking to get out of this this adventure? Well, I'm looking for some people, and I figured yeah. traveling, traveling around will help me find them. You you traveling and looking for these people aren't going to interfere with the things that you might need to do aboard this vessel, would it? No. I have a code of honor. I agree make a contract with you. I honor that contract. Okay. I can't ask for much more than that. All right. All right. Welcome aboard. Stand over there by the other guys there. and You know what? Jackson, good. Corey leans over to you. Mm. I bet you the guy with the horns. We can call him Beef. That'll be his nickname. <laughs> he is very beefy. And, and he kind of gets back to the data pad. Uh, Aaron Sargent, uh, that, that's this guy I picked out personally. Uh, uh, hello, sir. He's a very serious looking man. Uh, let's see if I can pop up his character art here for you. So you can see it better. Uh, do, 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 do. Character artwork, pro no players. So he is. A very big black man. He is carrying a briefcase by his side. Um, Orly, he says. And what What do you want to do? He points to you, are, Jackson. Are you, um... You're not here to babysit, are you? No. Then what is your speciality? I am a scientist, a research scientist. I lean over to my uncle and like, why do you think we need a research scientist? Hey, you know, there's, you might need somebody with that, that sort of ability, I think. Don't they always have like, like doctors and, doc and scientists, people on okay. ships? Yeah. Kind of surly. I am not surly. I didn't just, mean that. No disrespect. Just focused. That's all. Very good. Very good, then. Welcome aboard. If it's good enough for my uncle, it's good enough for me. Anything else you need to know? Not right now. Be a part of your crew. All right, gentlemen. Looks like we got ourselves a crew. Well, eh, we have all those applicants. Here we are. So, you know, uh, I'll let you do it. Uh, I would like to join you with on your maiden voyage. So just let me know when you get her ready <laughs> to to go out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, hope uh, your crew here will help you 
get that. Uh, like I said, you got a budget. Uh, hopefully that'll help you out. Get you going. Uh, you may want to all sit down and kind of decide what you want to do with that money. I know, Jackson, you're the captain, so you, you got final say. Uh, this, this ship probably needs a lot. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Well, that. we'll get right to it then. Works way. Y'all have a good one. Have fun. Hovers on out. Once again, leaving you alone with strangers. <laughs> I, I go to leave. <laughs> just, just just step uh, a step to the south and then step back north again. Oh. And then I'll ask you if you want to teleport. <sighs> okay. And so pretty much the first priority for the crew is to get this thing flight worthy and to decide what sort of equipment you guys might need the first thing that comes to mind that you didn't see on the ship in the last couple of days is no eva suits meaning if somebody had to do some work on the outside while you're in space <laughs> it would be very dire. <laughs> You'd have about a minute to do your work before you died. Before your blood boils over. Deep Mr. breath. <laughs> right, right, deep breath. Actually, I think you want to expend your breath. And you do want to expel. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Mr. Grimm? Yes, sir. I'm setting up the uh, the large table with food for everybody. Eggs. All and, right. You know, and water. So all laying it out. That's what I'm doing right now. So if everybody wants to head on up. All right, gentlemen, please follow me. There's a, a teleport right. that extends from here to over here if you step into that area. Here over the scratchy intercom. Grubs up! <laughs> Gotta fix that button. <laughs> so, Rusty, as far as you are aware, the ship can probably fly you're not sure um, how efficient it is um yeah with that one crooked engine that's gonna that's gonna need some straightening it's gonna take a little bit of time all right so um yeah she can fly she needs fixing pull out, you know, I had the, the data pad on uh, my leg, pull out, I'm like, okay, so if you look at here, I'm sure you notice the engine, it's all cockeyed, right? And, you know, taps the screen. Okay, yeah. We need to, uh, um, we need to get that straightened. Because it's better to be straightened and not crooked, you see? So, there's also some plates, missing armor plates here and there, I'm sure you saw the hole on the top there that has the bird nests in it, yeah. I'll sweep those out before we go. Um, what else? And I just start rattling off. Uh, All right, Rusty, Rusty, hold on for one second. Um, don't worry about the sweeping of the bird net. I'm sure once we start launching, they'll, it'll be a one that self correct, uh, self correct. <laughs> you got a point, but what we really want to focus on right now is what do we need to fix to make orbit and not die. I just show him the ever scrolling list of parts. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot this, of sir. minor systems that <laughs> could use like some deep maintenance. Not like I said, it it will fly. How well? <laughs> and how stable? And how straight? <laughs> how straight? <Yeah. laughs> like you could you could compensate the the crooked engine with the other engine, but. It's going to be difficult. All right, so so let's let's work on getting the the engine uncrooked. Did it straighten? All right, um, I'll get my tools. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. You said you knew how to cook. Mm -hmm. What else do you know how to do? Uh, well, I keep the ship running. You haven't figured that out yet. But but keeping the ship running, does that mean you're going to go out there and start wailing on that engine with a crowbar? Well, I mean, not in the... Okay, sometimes. It depends on the situation. What do you want? Look, you want me to fix it or not? Yes. All right. Go get my tools. Here's the parts list. Um, another thing that and comes I... up on the, the data pad is there, the computer is looks like it's working. It's 90% efficient, but there is 10% of it that seems to be a lot of corrupted data in one of the, the modules. There are 12 total modules in the system. Um, and it's run by a level two uh, persona core. Uh, but it seems like it's having trouble with some of the data. One of you guys said you're good with computer. That'd be me, sir. Uh, would you mind looking at the computer system? See if it's something you can fix, or if we have to go and uh, replace parts or, or whatnot, and bring me a list and see what it. Yep. Where's the uh, Where's the computer core? Ah, uh, the computer um, core yeah. is. Oh, sorry, you're asking. <laughs> you're asking up, just... <laughs> I believe it's on the lower level. I tap it on the pad and show them. Because on the lower deck, in the floor of the ship, way out here. So back where we came from. Uh, no. So if you follow, follow the hand. <laughs> if you go, well, if you no, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just then, trying to figure out how to get there. Yeah, just go down those those stairs. I love that. <laughs> those teleports are nice. So, computer room would be up here. Yep. Um, you also see, so there's a window over here. You see Aaron kind of puts his briefcase on one of the medical beds. He just sits there with his arms crossed. Just staring. I'm going to start running time. Um, yeah, so you begin the diagnostic. Uh, looks like it'll take a little bit of time. I'll let you make the first roll of the game. And you could either do electronics or hacking, depending on how you want to approach this. You kind of want to take this into a sideways manner and get underneath the problem um it would be hacking if you just want to get to the problem to find out how to fix and correct it uh that would be electronics all right um it being a military ship mm -hmm. the first thing i want to do is take a look at it and see if there's any markers in the quote unquote corrupt data that might indicate it's actually Encrypted data. Um, yes, ish. But anything that it's just generalistic stuff. Um, anything that was military when it was taken out of the military's grasp was was scrubbed. Right. But there's possibility that it's not a corrupt data there is a possibility of that it's just okay. having for some reason the computer cannot deal with that data so it's viewing it as corrupted 
then I think we need to go to hacking. Ugh. That'll do it. So for those of you at home, target number for any role is four. Um, unless there are modifiers, which in this case, there are not at this level. So the data seems to be somewhat of a Gordian knot. Um, it is a very confusing twisted sort of data maybe a personal encryption somebody wrote their own sort of uh, routine it would take time to get through this data can i make um, a backup of it and and work on it outside this system um or is it likely could. to damage it you could a computer actually types up saying if you would like uh, to work on this data or I could try to purge it I've been I've tried before but I no I don't think we want to I don't think we want to purge it I think that it's valid data but it'll probably take a while to get at can we archive it Take it out of resonant memory? Uh, yes. Uh, but I will need your help with that. Okay. Well, he basically gives you some simple instructions that you can follow. Um, that just needs more authorization than anything. And right. Jackson will probably have to provide some of that authorization. Um, you can make a, a a hacking roll again or electronics to see if you can circumvent that. How to do, boss? Um, yeah. Not quite a race. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not quite a race. But yeah. Um, you could probably, it would take you some time to do it, but you could circumvent the, the uh, <laughs> down the hallway you hear banging on the something. Um, it would take some time, but you could probably find a way to circumvent Jackson's authority. But there's needed. really no reason to, right? There's no reason to. It'll take, it'll be a lot faster just, Call him up and go, hey, we need authority to get this done. There so I will do that. The, what's strange is the header of the data seems to be a repeated pattern, even in this knotted encryption. Okay. That, that's what you glean from that hacking role. Um... The computer says, is there anything else I can assist you with? Well, we want to run a, a full-on diagnostic to see if there's anything else that might be potentially on the verge of failure. Currently, we have three service droids available out of a complement full that would have been normally 12. Hmm. Would you like me to deploy them? Out of character. Surface droids would be what? Uh, they're they're basically uh, maintenance droids. Uh, maintenance maintenance robots. droids. Yeah. yeah, they're they're good for in, very basic uh, interior and exterior help. Like they couldn't solve complex issues but they can weld right. something <laughs> right okay uh yeah let's deploy two of them just general inspect all right um outside this room you hear some sort of 
hatch open and uh, you hear noises of some sort of electronic chittering <laughs> and uh, Rusty. There. Uh... That, the, the banging stops. <laughs> Who let out the droids? <laughs> Actually, you didn't even know there were droids. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> and and it, let's get it right. It's who let the droids out. Who uh -huh. let the droids out? Droids out. All right. Uh, to your total surprise, there are three maintenance droids coming down the hallway towards you. <laughs> Wait. I, God dang it. I go stomping back into the room, slam a couple of doors. <laughs> Apparently, I never knew this, place, this, this ship had droids. I thought. Did, did I? Was I able to hear that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I I actually asked the computer, "Has Rusty ever even acknowledged that you're?" I have never conversed with the man that has been living on this ship, though I have sensed him. Interesting. Well, I'm going to work on this data for a while. All right. I'll have you make an electronics or hacking roll. Uh, later on. Um, Sounds good. Roger, what are you doing? Um, I'll probably tag along with Rusty and see if he needs help getting the engine realigned. And because while I'm a jack of all trades, I'm better off helping people that may be a little more experienced than I am. So. You do have a, a bit of repair skill yourself, so yeah, be of help. Yep, the banging resumes. Uh, so okay. I follow the banging and <laughs> help out Rusty. <laughs> there is an awful lot of banging and complaining, apparently, about something about yeah. service robots. Well, you know, natural born sapiens. What can you do about them? on this goddamn garbage scout for the past 20 years and I had droids. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> as, as for you, Jackson, uh, you're going over the list. It, it's just a lot of general maintenance. Um, most of it could be ship, uh, like repaired if you just get some scrap from the yards. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so basically what I guess we'll, we'll be doing is is um finding out the stuff that we need money for, yeah. putting that list together, and then spending that money to repair the... Yeah, the, the first thing uh, Orly had suggested was spacesuits, EVA suits. Uh, the ship has none. Um, Aaron eventually reports to you, we're going to need medicine and supplies. How much? Uh, how much money do you need? I'll give you a list. All right. Give me a list. We'll get them done. Which room do you want me to take? Any except for the first two up front. Yep. I'll take this one. Closes the door. Locks it. <laughs> Alrighty then. And uh, the big bull man across from you on the table seems to have fallen asleep. Beef. He's, he's actually in the bathroom. <laughs> For those of you at home, he is my son. I get to see what he does. <laughs> he's in the bathroom. Oh. Actually, since we got it. I got it. You hear the cries of the, the bullish mutant <laughs> doing his business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're banging away, Rusty. Um, mm -hmm. You the, the service droids seem to be standing behind you, watching you, waiting for something. Yeah. 
Steve Spang. Well, what do you want? I just kind of beep once. Does it have a screen or a panel or something on the front of it? No. It, oh, they okay. kind of look like... <clears throat> I pull a picture up. The uh, Otix... <clears throat> Service. There. Can I do it from here? No. Uh, do that. I do this. Uh, they're they're small humanoid robots. Uh, probably about two feet tall. Um, they appear to be equipped with like like tool arms. They just seem to be staring at you. Well, um. Well, you can, I guess you can assist me. I, I shuffle to the side and I continue <laughs> thing, things with welding torches and questionable other tools. What does it do? They, they kind of come over and help you out. Um, as soon as you move out of the way of one place, they oh. begin <laughs> they begin continuing the work there. Um, the other thing uh, you are noticing in in the ship is uh, fuel. This thing is going to need fuel. It will lift off. It could probably get fairly far inside the solar system, but uh, you're about ten uh, percent. Oh, we're going to need fuel. Does this uh, ship have an intercom system? Uh, yeah. Push button kind of thing, or kind of does it like auto? Oh, okay, I'll assume it's there. Yeah, I press the button. That's fine. <laughs> Boss. Uh, yak. We're gonna need the. We're gonna we're gonna need a fill up. We're we're a tad low. We can get like above the earth, but uh, not much farther. All right, I'll add it to the list. You were you were in the bathroom. I put you in the bathroom. <laughs> oh. um, Back over to, to the engine. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, who wants to make the assessment between Rusty and Roger? Now you can assist another player. Um, each of you, so the assister can make a roll. And if successful, you're going to add a plus two bonus to the person who's doing the main body of work. This is for an assessment on how long it will take to get this ship safely okay. off the ground. I'll, I'll assist Rusty. He seems to know the ship more than I, so... All right, so why don't yeah, you make yeah. a repair roll, and then, based on your roll, see if you help or hinder him. Oh, nice. Well, you weren't, you didn't hinder him. <laughs> um, but he didn't really help. You're not sure what the full extent of the problem is, maybe. Uh, mm. Since you're new here. Unfamiliar ground. So why don't you make your evaluation, Rusty? Which my, um... Evaluate which which skill. Uh, so roll or, your repair skill. You again, don't okay. Get any particular bonuses, but you do have Mister Fix It. Once you hit that, you got to actually hit the roll. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> so you managed to erase two. So not only are you sure. Uh, <laughs> 
about a week of repairs are, are here. But you could probably reduce the costs and the time considerably with that role. All right. Them. We'll do that. So you figure instead of a full week, you're looking at maybe like five days. Um, and you know that you can, there's some old scrappers that are, don't really belong to anybody out in the field that you could probably take parts out of. Okay. It's Frankenstein, this bitch. Well, Raj, about five days, go scavenge some parts. Cost less will get us going. Um, yeah, I guess with the service bots, just kind of point at stuff and let them do whatever. I really wish I knew they were here. <laughs> I walk over to the so walk over so, to the intercom. So the good thing. So I'll I'll tell you the usefulness of the service robot. So if you want, you could just have them do general maintenance, um, and then they'll just kind of keep up the the general work. And just like Roger was attempting to do, you can have one of them assist you and hopefully give you a bonus to your role. Okay. How are the commands given? Console or just, just audible? Just verbally. They don't they don't respond okay. verbally, but uh Okay. You can just talk to them usually. There's two of them in here or just one? There are three. Three. Okay. Normally on a ship like this they have twelve. I hit the intercom button. Boss. <clears throat> One second. He's masturbating in the uh, the cockpit. Probably in probably in the pooper. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I was doing something on my cell phone. I didn't want to blast it. Oh. Um, what's up? Well, <clears throat> Paris will be about five days. Um, gonna have to scavenge a few things around the around the rest of the yard here, but we can make it work. Cause today I learned that we have maintenance droids. <sighs> we have maintenance droids. Very... Yes. Oh, that's I cool. never knew. I'm a. I'm gonna set them out to do do the menial uh, service needing. Um, so yeah. Anyway, five days. I end conversation. <laughs> Is there a? Uh, I, I, I'm just asking because I'm not sure. Is there a one eight hundred buy supplies get delivered to your ship number? Um, you can generally find stuff like that. Uh, you do have you know your own form of internet. Um, so you could get stuff delivered uh, if it was needed. Um. Some things you may have to pick up yourself, uh, but generally you live in a, a very modern age <laughs> where things can you be. You can order it off of Amazon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if I, if I want to, you know, even in today's age, I don't know if I want to order an EVA suit off of Yeah, you know, Bezos is still alive, so you know, 400 years later. Shock transferred his conscious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, because like the stuff like the the medical supplies and the uh, and the uh, EVA stuff like that would be easier to just order them and have. Yeah, uh, the general stuff uh, you can order, but uh, yeah, Aaron will give you a list of medical supplies by the the next game session. Um, and if you guys need any other equipment. Uh, you guys can kind of decide that between sessions, uh, just based on the equipment list, and uh, form a budget around that. Uh, what are you doing, Will Wellington? Uh, I'm waiting for uh, to be able to pick up stuff. Or I haven't gotten they told rusty. if I need... Some of those parts that you're going to need are awfully heavy. Yes. <laughs> going to need somebody to pry shit off. Uh, 
walk up uh, to the comm. Hit the button. Beef. Yes. You uh, yes. you're you're good at you're good at hauling things. Is that, is that right? Yes. Yeah, we're gonna need you. All right, come on. We got parts to pull off. And uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the conversation. <laughs> I uh, I gather up the the maintenance droids and I just give them all the ta all the main standard maintenance tasks that you know, like the really menial stuff that I was doing. Yeah. They're now it's now their job <laughs> for the time being. I st I also plan on double checking their work because I'm not so sure. But yes. So, what I'll do is I'll I'll pass some time because this can just mostly take time. Um, uh, I want uh, what's your character's name? Sam. <laughs> yes. Uh, choose if you want to make an electronics or a hacking rule uh, based on how you want to approach this. This for the data or for getting this the. This is for getting something out of the header. Yeah, that's that'll do it. Um, just a series of numbers repeated over, but it's in kind of log format. Um, the same series of numbers is repeated for the first part of the number and then there's another number that seems to be counting down but like i said this is this is like a dated log from maybe 50 years ago um you could spend some time doing some research on the meaning of these numbers if you'd like it sounds like a good idea. Why don't you make that roll? That'll do it. Um, yeah, the, these are some sort of coordinates to where exactly. You're not sure. Um, you would probably need somebody else to kind of point out the name the navigation data um and see what that's about all you can figure is that these are coordinates of some sort uh, either the computer could probably help you or somebody with the navigation skill yeah i was going to ask the computer if it can identify where these coordinates are so the computer has uh, or the add ons ship modules. This is a version three core, so it has a navigation of the six plus one. Six. Yeah. Do it the right way. E six. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What's the... you, you got the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't even add. The, I don't think it had the plus one, did it? Didn't look like it. Yeah. Either rolls, it didn't add anything. So, uh, a three still won't even do it. Um, the computer, while it has navigation data, uh, it can't really tell what this means, even though. For some reason, it logged it, which is really weird. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is there a... regular ship's log? Um, like, you know, port of call kind of thing? Yes. But it is not extensive. Most of it pertains to bringing the ship here. Okay. So it, somebody at some point cleaned it. Yes. Okay. How long has it been here? Since, you know, that's information I've got now. Um, probably about maybe 10 years. Hmm. All right. Well, the, the next thing I do is I uh, call Jackson on the intercom. All right. You are being healed, Captain. Go for Big Poppy Jackson. Uh, sir, we need to get some uh, uh, authorizations on the mainframe here to archive some data that's... The computer's saying it's corrupt. I think it just doesn't know what it is. Um, but it's causing a degradation of. All right, uh, do what you need. Uh, offload it to a storage or something, and let's get that bad boy cleaned up. You're gonna need to enter. Uh, you're gonna get a prompt to authorize actions. All right. Okay, I go ahead and do that. Okay, and you receive the prompt. Do you authorize this action? I do. All right. Um, so you get authorization. And mm -hmm. I'm going to proceed moving all the data to wherever you need it, archiving it. Yep. It should fit in a data pad, actually. Is there a yeah. data pad around? Because I don't want to put it in my virtue set. Uh, you could probably pick up pick pick up one easily with a uh, when you go to buy general supplies. Right. Uh, yeah, even even like a memory stick is pretty cheap. But it is it is separated now from the data at the computer is no longer hung up on it. Uh, did it, we get back up to full efficiency? Uh, yeah, every, everything is, is working. Okay. Uh, I guess the next thing would be to go down Rusty's list of anything that needs actual electronics repair. Mm -hmm. It's not already being done. Does your character have the repair skill? I don't have the repair skill, but I've got electronics. Yeah, I mean... Which I thought meant I could do both. Like, I could actually use electronics to do repair work. Yeah. I, I might have that wrong, though. Uh, yeah, it's mostly just knowing how to use control systems and stuff like that, but I okay. would allow under cer certain circumstances to that being maintenance. Yeah, I was figuring, like, at most I'm doing diagnostic type things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. So you will be doing that. Um, most of that just comes under the the general repair role that he made. Right. All right. Um, I actually, real quick. Yeah. I actually call the captain back again. Yeah, what's yeah. up? Sir, Who who's currently getting a hold of all of the equipment and, and supplies that we I am. As as everyone needs stuff, they're sending it to me, and I'm uh, compiling the list, and then we'll get everything at one shot. Well, I did do time in an S4 shop, sir, so if you need assistance with logistics and resupply, I can help with that, too. I'd be happy for the help. All right. So I'll take that over and start doing ordering and inventory. Yeah. 
Also, just make a common knowledge skill. Uh, check. Uh, okay. Add a, add a, there it goes. I say add a plus two, but you're fine. Um, uh, the captain has navigation. Or hope, you hope that he has navigation skills. Maybe he knows something about that navigation data. Yeah, uh, and I'm planning to ask him about it later. Okay. I'm just... I'm just making yeah. sure that you're aware. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's. I've that classified that low priority. <laughs> <laughs> Things like having food that isn't two hour eggs, and um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> being able to fly straight are probably a higher priority. All right. Um, so you know, five days is gonna pass on by while you're. You're working on stuff and ordering stuff. Um, well, we're going to be coming kind of to the end of session zero here. Roger. Yes. You are sitting in, I don't know what quarters you're going to take, but you're sitting in your quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just going to list of bounties. Yep. And you stumble upon something that pikes your interest, that turns your gut, actually. Mm hmm. Let's get uh, to this. That pop out. Um, so it is issued by the Centauri government, uh, Century, Centauri Central Government. Um, the fee is higher than a lot of other bounties out there right now. Uh, 35,000 credits by itself. Wow. For Jimmy, for a man named Jimmy Dune. Um, Make smarts check. Just roll your smarts. Nice. So they they posted a profile pic of this guy. You swear this man on that night was on Tabby La Rasa. Mm. The CGC wants him for lifting important and top secret state data on personnel. Um, however, apparently this man, Jimmy Dune, has fallen out of their jurisdiction uh, and has fled. Um, he is listed as armed and dangerous. Um, there's a few other little data points about him that they've able able to discern that his home colony is on Barnard Star um, in the uh, system of Barnard Star uh, uh, it's an old sediment called Old Stanton Cross that's in some sort of agricultural dome uh, colony uh, he has quite the criminal record, stepping back to a bit of a farmer uprising uh, in the system over agricultural rights some 20 years ago, which is still kind of ongoing. Uh, he seems to be fairly good at keeping himself out of sight, uh, as often any arrests against him have failed uh, for some reason or another. He is known to be a loud, crass uh, man with a greedy streak, uh, according from reports of other individuals that knew him. Hmm. Does it say he needs two hours to make eggs? Because I think I might already found him. <laughs> <laughs> Looks nothing like... I know. Like <laughs> well, actually, let's see if I can... I can... Pull him up here. 
that's what he looks like. Yeah. Really? Alright. Covered in tattoos. <laughs> Complete with mugshot. <laughs> Complete with mugshot. <laughs> um but yeah, that uh, certainly pikes your interest. Uh, their last known coordinates, this was a couple of weeks ago, so you don't know how cold the trail has gone since then, but apparently he jumped from Centauri A to Seoul. That was the last that they they had actually really reported seeing him on. All right. But yeah, most bounties, Earth, maybe five, ten thousand, if they're dangerous people. But the Centauri government has uh, apparently issue, issued this warrant against him. Now, that being said, uh, roll some common knowledge. <laughs> Uh, give yourself a plus two right to that rule. Yeah, it didn't. Oh, yeah, it came up. Yep. Centauri government, not known for their uh, fair and honest takes on things. They're they're quite authoritarian. Um, the fact that this man even got out of the Centauri system is is quite the feat. So take that as you will. He's a sneaky little bugger. Is there anything that says required alive? Um, actually, there is. He is required alive, and he is not to be talked to. Okay. Got it. I'll have to file away for... So where do you think, guys, we should go? Or some free time? We're on Seoul, I take it, correct? Correct, yep. Okay. All right. So, so, his, so he would have had to gone from the Centauri A to the, the Worm Barge... Uh, meeting point, essentially, where all warm barges arrive and launch from mm -hmm. in the solar system, which is somewhere above the ecliptic plane of planets. Uh, just kind of deep out there in space. So it does take a, a bit of time to get to. Um, you could probably pick up his trail if you were to look into it, but uh, the more time you, you uh, wait, the colder his trail would, would get. All right. Got it. But uh, that is definitely out there for you. Yeah, this this man, you, you remember that face. He was laughing mm -hmm. the whole time. Kind of like he is now. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> making, All right. Making jokes the whole bit. And I would need to get off. I need to get up to that drop-off point where the worm barges check in. Yeah, uh -huh. typically around those areas, there are a number of stations that serve incoming arrivals and you know outgoing travel and stuff like that. Um, so he could have most likely gone to one of those first. Got it. File that away for when we get up there. Or if there's a suggestion, we head up there so I can <laughs> figure it out. Yep. Um, do you mention the navigation data to the captain during this time? Yes, I do. Um, okay, Jackson, make a navigation check. Make it at Plus two. 
Uh, how do I run? So click the skill here. sheet. Yeah, okay, click the skill. And then it'll come up in chat. There you go. And then uh, down below, you can add a plus two trait roll modifier. Or, and there's... Yeah. And then roll. E yeah. Yeah, these, these coordinates make sense if you place them in the Wolf 359 system. So I'll relay that back to him. Um, yeah, these uh, these coordinates uh, correspond with coordinates in the Wolf 359 sector. Well, that's interesting. Um, and there the was... number, and the number that it was counting down is some sort of distance. And it looks like the the, the countdown distance. Hmm. Well, that was in the, quote, junk data that the computer was getting hung up on. Huh. God. Yeah. I thought the computer was wiped. These logs are about 50 years old. And it the computer tried to wipe it, but it was unable to. You probably would have been able to, but I've, I, I'd rather archive it and see if we can figure out what it is. because. It's not junk data. It's not corrupt. It just looks like probably somebody rolled their own encryption. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's figure out what. So I'm going to work on that as as time allows to see if I can crack it open. So the homework for this week <laughs> at some point uh, just kind of decide uh, what kind of equipment you guys need to buy. Uh, generally, the, the ship repairs will, will be done uh, without affecting that, that pool of money. Uh, so if there's anything important you guys feel that you need, even up to, you know, arming the ship, if you can afford uh, guns on the ship, you know, you can put in like a fucking machine gun on the outside so you can sit, <laughs> sit there and attack attack things while hovering. Uh, you could do that. There are mounting points on this ship. Um, yeah. And then uh, from there, decide what you want to do. Uh, Jackson, the last point is uh, you're also looking up ways to kind of bring in some income with the ship. Um, and of course, one of the ways is uh people transport yeah cargo yep. transport i'm sure there's a a, a board i can go look for people who are looking for. there is um there is a particular uh upcoming rock star who needs transport to a couple of gigs while her ship is uh any in the Wolf 359 sector? Uh, it doesn't specify. She says she will meet with any captains who are willing to take her on and see if uh, the rates and facilities are amendable to her, what she needs. Um, and her name is Aurelia Times. Roll common knowledge plus two to the roll. See if you have heard of this person. And what? Plus two uh, to the roll. So you click on the trait modifier down below. Oh, yeah, you've heard of her all your time. She's got a, a few popular songs out there. Yeah, well, I'll uh, I'll send a, a message out to her people to get in touch with uh, my, my people, mainly me. You feel you feel you might have to get rusty to do some extra. <laughs> right. if you're gonna take that on. She's gonna come in. A... I ain't getting on this. Shit. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so uh, you guys have three things that you can do. You can either take on, you know, see how the passenger situation is like. You can investigate the coordinates, or if Roger suggests it, you check out his, his bounty. Yeah, I'll bring it up when it comes up to the time. Um, so, yeah, just think about what you want to do over the next week, and uh, we will get to that and begin some sort of an adventure. Or if you just want to totally fuck off and, you know, go out to the Lakeley system for no reason, <laughs> we could do that. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, I think it, uh, it'll be an interesting little uh, adventure here. Uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, things that they want to know? Uh, follow up kind of things to what has occurred? No, I don't think so. I think pretty much yeah. for me, it's pretty straight. Yeah, this. Uh... This is cool. This is I'm having a good time with this. All right, good. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody in stream. Um, hope you enjoyed what you saw. There's there's more yet to come, uh, in the adventures in space. Maybe I'll transform them into pigs, and there'll be pigs in space. Please do not do this. Or, <laughs> or hear me out. Bears. Space no, bears. no bears. Come on! <laughs> you know, you could get a whole new body crafted for you that is a bear, and you could be a space bear. Yeah. It's expensive, mm. but you could do it. Does that go along with the space pope? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and hello, J Taz. Welcome aboard. How you doing? All right, so we're going to end the stream here. Uh, we will be back next Sunday at... Uh, the stream starts at 6, the game starts at 6.30, and I hope to see you all there. Thank you for coming in. Next time I'll even remember to play the music in the background. Because <laughs> I totally oh, forgot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everybody have a good week. All right, Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.